Hey guys, and welcome back to Who Wears the Pants. I'm Abby Herbert, and who are you? Josh Herbert. And Josh finally let me start the podcast. And <laughs> I took I do? everything in me to hold, <laughs> to hold back, but I'm going to let you start it. Did I do good? Pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now I don't know where to go from here. So <laughs> oh, well, take it over. <laughs> oh, no, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, yeah. So last week's episode was Abby's story, mm-hmm. my story. And it was a long episode. <laughs> long episode. I mean, you got a long story. So, um, you know, it fit. And uh, I think a lot of people learned a lot of stuff about you that they might not have known um, about your past, your history and how you came to be. Yeah. And I think this episode we were going to switch the roles and I was going to interview you and learn about your life and your, <laughs> your Yeah, life well, <laughs> funny thing is uh, when Abby started talking to me about, you know, your story is going to be next. I was like, I don't know if one episode is going to be enough. Oh, see, um, I thought opposite. I was like, this is going to be huh? a short episode. <laughs> no, would that be a pun intended because you're short? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you're doing the foot tap. If All you right. guys are watching this on YouTube, which I, I hope do. you are, Josh constantly taps his foot. We we have two things. People don't like my dirty socks, so I'm trying to make a change. What, like how else? Well, I you know, it's I'm trying to get comfy. My coffee's run cold. He's trying it's, to cover up his fupa. <laughs> Cover up your. What's fupa. a fupa? Um, we, Why don't you? What no, is I think we're going to keep this podcast pretty G-rated. But anywho, uh, one of the segments I really started to enjoy now that I've taken this fashion ability uh, <laughs> to my next level. Uh, the podcast is called "Who Wears the Pants." But Abby, who are you wearing today? I don't know why he started this thing, but he really enjoys it. So, it's um, my favorite thing. okay, today I have this thrifted um, mm. flannel. I almost said cardigan. I don't remember if it's my poppies, my grandfather's, or Goodwill. It's one of theirs. Um, The top is Honest. Shout out to Honest. They sent this to me. It was really great. Jessica, thank you. My my pants are from Free People. I am in that weird pregnancy stage of like the belly's not a bump, but Mm. it's like not flat either. It's like I just ate way too much food and pants just aren't fitting the way they used to. So I got like this really nice high-waisted band. Uh, free people yeah. and then I have my Ugg slippers because you guys say my socks are dirty and my socks are dirty so I got the got the slippers on what oh, are you nice. wearing um yeah thanks for asking um <laughs> I didn't think you would but uh, let me adjust <clears throat> he went all <gasps> oh there's my brand new, new brand phone. new phone. so <laughs> I actually I mean before I start my outfit I got the new uh one sec let me pick it up Oh my gosh, did it crack? Uh, I not. It hit a cinder block back there. And if you guys know the OG um, followers on TikTok, Josh does not put a phone case on his phone. No phone like, case. at all. And we, we no used to case. make videos of Josh dropping his phone and it cracking. And everyone was like, get that man a phone case. We finally did. And here That's you why are I have with Apple the brand Care. new. I have Apple Care. It doesn't matter. There should be, like, they make clear phone cases. I know, but I, all right, I'm going to talk about a design flaw real quick <laughs> while we're here. Their cases, so dumb. I, I don't like them. And especially the one with the circular magnetic charge yeah. case. It's so stupid. But here's my thing I want to see. This phone is no different than the 13. It has a little island in the front screen, which is cool. It's a nice feature. Here's what I want from Apple if you're listening. I am a shareholder, so I have authority <laughs> to say this. But I want the, the rounded edges back, okay? I like the thinness. Oh, I like I the know. rounded edges. I don't like the square edge. And it's 2022. I mean... Come on, can we have a flush camera? I know they're oh. great cameras. <laughs> they're awesome. I want a flush camera system that just is right in with in line. But that's and, what uh, makes the camera so great, right? That it has to be. Yeah, but way. they can figure it out. I think they're they're just gonna put it into another phone someday. So they're like, oh my gosh, we made it flush. They can already do that, please. So that's just what I'd like to see. But back to my outfit. Um, <laughs> it's gonna fall again. Can you? <laughs> uh, so we have the bomber jacket from Buck Mason. Oh. Um, we have the white t-shirt from Hanes. Um, we've got a gap belt with gap carpenter jeans. Wow. I've been wearing kind of baggier jeans. I used to wear very tight skinny jeans. Jeggings. Jeggings. Um, <laughs> it was a phase, but I've got muscular thighs. I mean, I played hockey, hockey my whole life and you know, I lift and stuff. So these things are just ham hocks. And, uh, it took me a while to get secure with baggier clothes, but I think for men of shorter stature, like me, 6'2", um, <laughs> baggier pants actually look better. 
hoist it up to your, your waistline. Um, you know, maybe a little tuck. And then I got the East Wing boots on. Love those. Um, really nice. You thrifted nice. those ones, right? Um, I thrifted a pair, but they were too big. Oh, and I yes, liked yes, them yes. so much, I actually found them online. And um, I almost cut you off there, but I'm working on it, guys. So many people called yeah. me out. But I get very excited when I talk. Yeah. And well, you're just rude. <laughs> If we're being, you're just, be, you're rude. <laughs> no, I get honest. so excited, but I held it in. If someone was watching this, you were talking, I was like, like I was holding it back. Oh, I know, I could tell. But um, should we talk about, before we get into the episode, what we discussed in Lululemon yesterday? Yeah, so here's one of the things, okay? I don't really like to shop in person, but now being a dad, uh, you know, business owner, husband, <laughs> my time podcaster. is just, podcaster, podcaster, is very crunched and you know if i if i need something pair of pants shoes something i like to go to the store now and just I pick like it to up see it, but i think it I like also see was it, for me because i love a mall yeah. my favorite thing to do is go to a mall and you were never that way you were always like shipping shipping yeah. order well, malls are crowded and... i used to have agoraphobia really bad so yeah. going to a mall is not great um but you're working on it i'm working on it but uh all right here's my thing like lululemon if you're listening any store out there why why does no one ever carry an inseam less than 30? It is. It's it, terrible. It's, it's actually. It crushes I, me. I don't know the correct term, but like it's what, what do they have against? The I short don't think kings? it is. I think it's trying to streamline their profits and they're probably like, well, the average person, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Let's not worry about the average person. Let's think <sighs> about it. everyone. Well, here's the thing. They're sold out in this new pant online. I want these Lululemon ABC uh, baggier pants cropped. You know, for us shorter guys, they're sold out. Why? Because shorter guys are looking for pants. There's a market here, people. So if you are a clothing company right now looking for profit margins to escalate, <laughs> short pants, cut them off, but do 27, it's, but it's 28 inseam. But not even that. You're, you're missing the point. I get where you're coming from, but what we're saying heated. is- I'm getting heated. I'm to take my jacket off. Why do they not have 28s in store? Like you said, that actually the shortest one I saw was 32. And I we went up to an employee who was very, very nice. We were like, sir- um, do you guys have 29, 28s or whatever? What's your size? 30, 28? I don't know. I'm like a 29, 28. That's what I just said. <laughs> but anyway, 29, 28. And he was like, oh, we don't carry 28 in, in store. And I'm like, what do you mean? That like, why not? Carry couple sizes. I know yeah. not everyone is. They did have a 28 there, but it was from a return. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, like, my short king wants to shop in store. Yeah. So please carry a couple sizes. And I think it should be the same as like extra tall. Um, carry all sizes. Yeah. So that's my little rant. And they just leave us short guys out to hang, you know, and it's just, it's not right. It's not right it's, because he wants to be right. able to have, he wants to be able to go into a dressing room. I want to be able to shop like everyone else. I want to have the same experience and I can't have that experience because no one carries my inseam. So I hope we can make a change here with this little announcement. Yeah. And if anyone's listening, um, Carry some all sizes. Or wouldn't this be cool? What? And I'm just going to throw this out here. It's another job opportunity for oh, people. Oh, I know where you're going. A tailor. A tailor. Why don't stores have a personal tailor, right? Nordstrom you, does. Sorry, I cut well, you off again. I'm talking about like your average, you know, any store, like, uh, you know, I don't know, wherever you buy your jeans, American Eagle, uh, you name it. But you go in, right? <laughs> the end seems way too long. They don't fit. How cool would that be if they're like, hey, you know, in like 15 minutes, we can have these, you know, take your measurements, everything. Why don't you go, you know, grab a coffee, go grab something at the cafe, come back. And then you have a pant that fits perfect right there on the spot and you leave the store. Genius idea, Josh Herbert. Well, that's why there's Alteration Express. <laughs> I've taken my jeans there and they hacked them. I know they do. It's so sad. He came oh, back they looked so bad. It was a hundred dollars. It was floods. It was it was literally Ooh. above his ankle and they were jeans and she made them a flare and the, Josh comes down and was like, they're really good, right? And I was like, oh. It was, it was tragic. I still wore them though. Okay. So, so yeah, anyway. moral of the story is carry all sizes, short, tall, big, small, mm -hmm. petite, extra tall, whatever it needs to be. There should be at least one size in store if we're trying to be, sorry. Inclusive. Inclusive. Thank you. I almost, For the shorter yes. community. In any community, any size. Any community. And that is our what are we wearing or what pants are we wearing segment. But we are, I mean, gosh, it's already been about 14, 15 minutes. I yeah. don't even know. But um, I think we want to get to today's topic. Um, and what's today's topic, Abby? Josh's story. <laughs> All right. So um, without further ado, let's dive into Josh's story. Josh's story. Dun, dun, dun. 
So do you ever feel overwhelmed by the amount of choices there are out there? Whether you're shopping for cereal or toilet paper, there are so many options and it's really hard to know what's the best one for you. So when it comes to finding skincare products that actually work, it's even more overwhelming. I was having a breakout on my chin the other day and I went to try to find a treatment for it and I literally felt like there was a hundred products and I was overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. Um, and when finding skincare products that actually work for you it is complicated and that's why I am so excited to say we are partnering with apostrophe uh, the sponsor of this episode if you guys didn't know, Apostrophe is an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get you that customized skincare treatment for your unique skin. Through Apostrophe, you can get access to oral and tropical treatments that treat your skin and has proven ingredients to clear acne. So all you have to do is simply fill out an online application. I actually just did it right before this podcast and it was super quick and easy. You just snap a few photos and then you will be connected with your dermatologist that will create the perfect plan for you and your skin. Apostrophe offers access to treatments for all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne and even back, chest and butt acne. They treat breakouts from head to toe. I'm trying to treat my adult acne from my hormones, especially during this pregnancy, and I'm so excited to do that with Apostrophe, and it'll be arriving soon, so I can't wait to try it out. We have a special deal for you guys. You can get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash Herberts when you use our code Herberts. That's a saving of $15, and this code is only available for our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Herberts and click begin visit. You can use our code Herberts at sign up, and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring today's episode, and let's get back to the show. All right, so this is my story. Let's get into it. Where should we start? I was going to say, you're taking control of your story. Know, you I told me I had to interview you. I can't help it. Okay, but that's okay. Um... Alrighty, so where does Josh's story begin? Yeah. What day were you born? What's your social security number? Yeah, yeah. What is... I think it was a Sunday. <laughs> um, okay. So I was born, uh, it was actually from what my mommy says, uh, it was a cold <laughs> uh, April day. I think yeah. it was snowing, maybe, possibly. April 1st, 1990. He's an April Fool's baby, so it April. all makes sense. Yeah, um, Pittsburgh, PA, born and raised. <laughs> um, we Wait, we figured out Josh's Yinzer accent is actually like a mixture of just Australian and just like... <laughs> yeah, Yinzer going downtown, watch a game. That's a Pittsburgh geese accent. Okay, whatever. I'm born and raised, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess um, before... I arrived, um, how we kind of came to be in this uh, northern suburb of Pittsburgh. Oh, we're going like back, back story. I, I love it. Do it. Yeah, just yeah. a quick one. So yeah. uh, my grandfather, um, James J. Herbert, uh, came here with his brother and family and uh, they just did odd end jobs and stuff and him and his brother saved a lot of money and at the time, this area was all farmland and mm -hmm. uh, so they ended up buying you know as much land as they could which is crazy to me like how do you just go about buying just land? buy land i don't know <laughs> they, they like they raise livestock i don't know he did a bunch of different uh stuff but uh bought a bunch of land and then um him and his brother decided to start a development company and they started developing the land and then building homes uh mm -hmm. there was more and more people moving from pittsburgh out into the outskirts into the suburbs if you will um, and that was all getting built. Now we're talking, this is probably, and don't quote me, this is probably in the 1960s, I, I want to say, okay. um, 60s and 70s. And my grandfather had four boys, my dad, and then my three uncles. Which is crazy. Four, four boys, boys. All pretty, uh, you know, close in age and, yeah. uh, you know, raising them up and you hear all the stories and stuff, but you know, those, those, uh, <laughs> boys were raised very hard in different ways. Like they just worked constantly you know before school after school i mean i can't imagine being raised in a house where your family has like their own business yeah. so like the second you, your little hands and feet are moving they were probably working, working. doing something yeah, like, especially with boys because it was construction building yep, like building, they could do something <laughs> um but with that being said you know obviously that type of work you get pretty strong and muscular mm -hmm. and so pretty much they were all wrestlers and very skilled wrestlers in yeah. the western pa area which is a very competitive wrestling world um and so that was kind of like their lineage of that um and then that's kind of how i came you know to be in into this world in the 1990s i started working well your mom and dad 
met in high school, right? Yeah, they so they they met in high school. They were high school sweethearts. And then my mom dumped him for a little bit uh, <laughs> in college. And uh, they both went to Slipper Rock. He only went for a semester. Uh, yeah. He got, I think he got a scholarship to wrestle mm-hmm. um, and maybe play football. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think he did get a scholarship to Maryland to play football, but he didn't go. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He wanted to follow his little sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Slipper Rock had a, a D1 wrestling program, I think, at the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he was coming home every day to work. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty much got to the point where he had to work. So he Mm -hmm. dropped out, um, and just started working. And luckily, um, my uncles, my dad and my grandfather and grandma, they built an amazing business and were able to, they built out, you know, probably thousands of homes since the seventies. Very successful business. um, If not hundreds of homes, uh, in our area. Um, and you know, worked hard. Like when I was little, my dad was always on, he was the excavator. It's a hard word to say. Mm -hmm. Can you say it? No, I'm not even attempting. <laughs> um, so he'd be in the, you know, the bulldozers and uh, the big machines uh, digging out the foundations and stuff. That yeah. was kind of like his role um, amongst other roles. I'll never forget moving up here because I moved up here for Josh. And he every time we'd pass house, my dad built that. Well, like the family business built that. Mm-hmm. They built that. And I'm like, oh, my yeah. God. Like I didn't understand once again, coming from a small town, I didn't even know people built homes. They're yeah. still, even though we're building our own home right now, it just still doesn't make sense to me. So the fact I was like, they were very talented and successful, beautiful Worked homes. Hard, yeah. Um, so then, yeah, you have how many siblings? Yeah, so um, I have two older sisters. Um, one's eight years older than me, and one's mm-hmm. five years older. So a little bit of a gap, um, you know, with us. But um, yeah, it was awesome. I really enjoyed uh, having two older sisters, and I actually have a lot of female cousins and stuff. So I was just kind of raised in that way. And I think having two older sisters, like, it kind of makes you a better guy I think yeah. in a way um That's why I just you're knew so how sweet. to yeah I knew how to like respect women and you know my mom and my sisters pretty much like helped raise me in, in that yeah. process so yeah um yeah so then um where where did you how was like elementary school how was your sp- sports growing yeah, up yeah, how was all how was all that yeah so I guess like as you guys probably see now, if you watch any of the stuff, like I do a lot of athletic stuff alongside my music, but I always gravitated towards athletics. Um, I was kind of like stronger than a lot of people because I was working this construction thing, like from a very young age, carrying bricks, carrying yeah. like lumber all around the place. And so obviously my family was invested into the wrestling world and that's like all I knew. I went right into wrestling. But you got your first, I, your mom tells a story, like you were wild. You I got was your, crazy. And similar to Poppy. I was going to say yeah. similar to Poppy. Like we'll do a whole episode on her. This girl is insane and she has my energy and she has Josh's energy, which is just yeah. too much. And you got like your first set of stitches at like what, like 12 months old or like something crazy. Yeah, we were like getting ready for something and <laughs> I was running around and I ran into a cabinet and I still have the scar. I don't know if you can zoom in here in the light. But I have a scar right here. <laughs> got to relax your forehead. There you go. <laughs> in the middle of my forehead. Um, yeah, busted it open. My dad had to take me to get stitches. I think they were going to church. So he took me to get stitches. Crazy. And, and I um, remember your mom saying like you were in gymnastics, like anything, karate, yeah. like anything you could do to be active. That's how she kept your energy going. And yeah, I feel nonstop. like that's how we're what we're dealing with Poppy right now. Because we're like, what can we get her into? Because she's climbing on things. So she's very much like her dad. Yeah. And um, no, with that being said, I'm not even quite sure how I discovered my passion for ice hockey. But mm-hmm. Somehow around five, six, I gravitated. I started a uh, developmental ice hockey program around here. Um, and I met like my best friend now. Uh, he did it with me. And yeah, I just, I, I loved hockey. There was something about it. Um, the speed on the ice, the, I liked contact, even though you couldn't really hit at that age. It was, you still bumped <laughs> into each other. Um, and there was no bigger rush than scoring a goal. I loved scoring goals. I don't know. There's something about it. And so when it came, you know, fast forwarding, I had to choose between hockey and wrestling. Um, Why? Because it was the same season or just in general, you just needed to choose? Yeah. So like junior high, it got more serious got and it. I was missing a lot of wrestling tournaments and stuff because of hockey. Yeah. And my co- my coach and, you know, teammates were kind of getting salty. Like I was on the, we had two squads on wrestling and I was on the top mm-hmm. one, but I kept missing stuff because of hockey. Got it. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't fair to everyone. So I had to, I chose hockey because I was better at it and it was yeah. a lot more fun than wrestling. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I knew nothing of hockey before dating Josh. So he, 
he you found that love of hockey for me because I genuinely enjoy going to hockey games. They're hard to watch on TV. They're hard to yeah, watch, but it's fun being there. And it's so much fun being there, and I'm still learning my my uh, terms of hockey. Um, but we just had the conversation yesterday. You're like what do you think Poppy will play hockey? And I'm like, Hey, if she wants to play, yeah, but like my cool. thing is I asked you like your, your high school didn't have like a girl's team though. Did they? Um, well actually, uh, we had a female on our team. Oh, she was a, okay. a goalie. In high Cause school. I'm like, I, yeah. I want Poppy to do something where she can continue to do it. I would hate for her to do something like if we get her in it at like five or six and have to stop because there's not a girls league or there's not, um, you can't have a girl on your team. Well, that's good to know. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. And she was stellar. Oh, I'm sure. Phenomenal. Amazing. D1 Dartmouth. That's want, crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. So hockey and then where, well, did, I like, guess I kind of skipped ahead not oh, to cut you sorry. off. Ooh. Um, but let's talk about Josh elementary childhood. Like yeah. how was I? Um, obviously I was like a rambunctious kid, mm -hmm. um, always active doing something. Um, but I also liked art. I liked to like draw and paint and mm -hmm. I don't know where I picked that up. Um, didn't really develop any sort of love or passion for music. I liked listening to it. Um, my dad would drive around in his truck and I'd listen to like, uh, our local station, which is like classic rock Leonard and then, Skinner. <laughs> yeah, classic rock type stuff. And then my mom would always listen to like temptations. And mm -hmm. so I kind of had like. I was always listening to something at a young age, but I was kind of more in class, uh, quiet. Like yeah. it would depend on the class. Sometimes I try to be like the class clown if I had like friends in there and I'd try to like get attention that way. But I was, I was relatively quiet. Like I would just sit there, but I was, it was hard for me to pay attention. I was always doodling. And I remember like first grade, we had to do these reading reports and, uh, it, parent teacher conference yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was like yeah like he's not retaining anything like he just draws well i <laughs> like i diagnosed you you do have adhd we, supposedly it's we, not professionally diagnosed but. um it is not but i i definitely did he's very you're you have such a creative mind and it is it is hard for you to focus on one thing because you're yeah. always wanting to do the next so we say josh starts so many project projects but it's very hard for him to Finish. I agree with that. So now I can see if, if you were experiencing that at a young age, that it, it makes sense. Yeah. It's almost like not compulsions, but like I get this huge wave of energy to yeah. like do something. And then all of a sudden Is, he's on there's the like next something thing. else that I like try to tackle. That's probably why I can never like finish a song. When I say no, I, 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 I get I, so far and then I'm like, I can see that. Cause then you get excited about the next one and then the next thing. And yeah. Um, okay. So you, your love for art, your love for hockey, yep. you're, you were quiet, which I can see. Pretty I, quiet. What age was that fart story in school? Cause you tell that one all the time. Where I poop my pants or. <laughs> Not worry. I guess, didn't you like fart in class or something? That was in high school. Yeah. Oh, it was, okay. <laughs> it was an English class. Uh, I was a senior. I just remember that story. It was after lunch and I don't know what I ate, but I honestly thought it was going to be silent. <laughs> it, was, it was during popcorn reading. <gasps> And just, it was, <laughs> it was yeah. just a bad and one. everyone knew it was me. And I tried to be like, oh yeah, it was me. And it was just, just like, embarrassing. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. I, for some reason I thought that was like, middle but yeah, school. let's, uh, um, so but wait, be, sorry. Go ahead. You do, ha you did have like a pooping your pants problem though. Yeah. Growing up, <laughs> I, I, they wouldn't let me eat chocolate. <laughs> it's a true story. Uh, they would hide the chocolate from me. I just couldn't hold it. <laughs> like, his his really good friend um you have two good friends and weren't you guys like all yeah i only have two friends so <laughs> this is my favorite story you were all playing downstairs in like a house yeah. and and josh you pooped your pants and like something fell on the floor so it was just one of those <laughs> uh i've had a couple poop pants stories but this one in particular is extremely it's embarrassing my favorite. and it was one of those poops where it was just a hard turd it <laughs> okay, was like josh, a marble okay. Um, and it fell out of my pants and we were down on the carpet in his basement and it kind of got a little smashed in and I was so embarrassed and I kept trying to like hide it. We were, I think we were like playing pool or something. I don't know why I was sitting on the floor probably cause I had to poop and his mom came downstairs and all of a sudden she's like looking around. I don't know why she looked at the carpet, but there was a turd <laughs> smashed into the carpet and she came over and she's like, what is that? And I was like, Oh what is that and she put her nose to that turd and smelled it and she <laughs> looked up at me with the fiercest look ever and went it's poop and josh and i said oh my gosh it must have been the dog and she goes we don't have a dog <laughs> and she knew it was me instantly um 
I'm oh not even God. sure. I think I blacked out after that uh, point. I don't even remember how The that, fact that you blamed it on a dog and they don't even they don't have, have a dog. dog. Um, <laughs> like That is my favorite story of all time. Yeah. I have another one too at another <laughs> friend's house and oh it must have been something I ate, but it ruined my jeans. Um, <laughs> and I, I waddled my little butt back home. It was a couple houses away and I started bawling to my mom and we had to throw the jeans away. Oh, no, like, and Josh's mom is like, there's so many pairs of underwear and pants that we had to throw away. I don't know. I, I <laughs> solve that issue now. I'm pretty regular. No, um, you, you do still have, like, IBS. I don't. I am very regular, same time every day. Okay, but, we can we can cut the um, conversation here because it's cute when you're talking about, like, a child, yeah, but, like, okay. now a grown it's adult. Healthy. We all do um, So I hope, I pray Poppy does not get yeah, we'll that have the chocolate trait from, from you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, moving forward... Um, <laughs> So besides the, you know. So when did music come into play? Like yeah. middle school, right? Yeah. So actually, I kind of wanted to touch real quick on anxiety because that's a big part oh, of my life. Okay. Um, now, I always tried to pinpoint, you know, if, for those listening and for those watching, um, I'm pretty open about it. I have panic disorder. I've had it since relatively, I can remember like 10 years old. Um, and I've always been like, was I born with it? Like, did I develop it? And I always remember being younger, having some sort of like attachment anxiety. Like when I get dropped off for daycare, mm -hmm. being young, like I would get this, you know, like being away from my parents yeah. and I would get this like anxiety, which when you're that young, you don't know what it is. You're just like scared. And even as the parent, you're just like, oh, every child. Yeah. Has every that. child like, has so that. It's, it's kind of um, hard to, I feel like. And like when I was at daycare notice. and stuff, like I'd be fine. Yeah. Um, but then as I got older, like elementary and stuff, like, you know, everyone did like sleepovers and stuff. And I could never sleep over at people's houses because I had such anxiety being away from home mm -hmm. and being away from my parents. Your bubble. So that's when it, I think, became more of a serious issue, but we didn't really think anything of it. Um, and there was one incident. That happened, correct? That you kind of like. Yeah, and then remember. we were on a family vacation with the Herberts, and uh, me and my two older cousins. Uh, I was probably nine, I think, at the time, eight or nine. Mm, yeah. I don't really remember, but uh, we were going. We were walking down the beach from like where our family was positioned to go like body surfing or something, and uh, I remember like my mom was like, "Hey, just watch him." I was the youngest one, and we went, and they said, "Don't go in the water." And so I was like the one I was like, well, they're not, we're not allowed to go in the water, yeah, you know, you and obviously really they did. And we were probably like, I don't know, a two minute walk down the beach. And I stood at the shoreline and they went into the water and stuff. And I just really, I, I don't think I wanted to be at the beach at that. I was just like over it. I was like, I want to go back. And so they're like, okay, it's just that way. Go ahead. And yeah. I started walking and walking <laughs> and walking and, and walking and, and, and it started getting darker and darker and yeah. darker and uh, all of a sudden it's the evening and the beach is starting to get cleared and I'm, I'm look I, I keep going and going I'm like I had to have passed it now I haven't seen my family now mind you it was a very crowded day on the beach yeah. I was young um, why didn't you stop to ask someone correct like, when you're that young I don't I don't know I just like just, kept looking for them I'm like I have to be there by now because I didn't really remember how far down we walked yeah and I'm like well maybe it was further than it was and you're young you don't really think about that stuff um, and then I started to get anxious you know i was very hungry i was tired i hadn't eaten and i don't it was probably like two or three hours i was gone yeah um the beast started clearing now at this point not me knowing but my family has a search party out they oh, yeah. called the police at this point yeah um like i mean i can chaotic. imagine like i know family when members your mom are crying tells everyone thinks i'm like, yeah. like drowned or something it was very it was very serious and tragic and uh i found an old couple packing up their lawn chairs um and i just ran up to them and i was like excuse me i'm lost and they were so sweet they brought me right to a hotel mm -hmm. um where we were able to like look in a uh, yellow page book like a phone and they book. found like my grandparents uh address in florida and we called them but obviously they were with our family on the beach um so then they took me into the lobby and we were able to call the police and they matched up the yeah. you know, police reports and then my family came and stuff but that was super tragic and i don't know if like the panic stemmed from that but Fast forward like, a, I don't know, a couple months or a year later, I experienced my first panic attack mm -hmm. and we were in church um, where, you know, we would go every Sunday and I started to get really hot and it was in the part, if you go to like a Catholic church, you have to kneel. Mm -hmm. I started getting really hot and then all of a sudden my heart started racing and I I just got this overwhelming sense of I'm, this is it, like I'm dying and I kind of went outside my body mm -hmm. in a weird way and not a very comfortable way, um, complete terror. And so I told my dad, like, hey, and he came outside with me and we actually went all the way to the car and I couldn't breathe. And he was trying to slow me down, like, hey, just breathe. Um, collected myself. And from then on, 
um, I was just stricken with panic attacks weekly, yeah. daily. Um, a lot of people didn't know because I was embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that I had well, this. Well, it wasn't very common. wasn't common. Well, um, I mean, it was, but no one talked. Sorry, it wasn't. Yeah, no one really openly talked, talked about, about it. it. And, yeah. uh, you know, I was a sport. You know, I played sports. I was like, tried to have this like persona. I didn't want people to like make fun of me. Um, and so I was just like a bit odd sometimes, but that was just my nature too. But it's pretty weird. Like no one in my high school, I mean, maybe middle school or high school, like no one really knew I was besides maybe some that. teachers, you yeah. know, but knew I was dealing with this, not only in school. And you don't know what caused that panic attack in the church. No, just, I just, it just, just happened. happened. Yeah. It was just crazy. And then, um, I think from there, what spiraled was like, I'm afraid to get that feeling again. Oh yeah, totally. And then you think about it. So then once that developed, everything in my life got a lot more complicated. Um, you know, everything from sitting in class because yeah. I would get panic attacks just sitting in the classroom and anywhere I, I, I felt like trapped. Like that's why traveling, yeah. um, flying on airplanes, uh, riding in elevators, like became like, I couldn't even do it. Like yeah. I would like biggest fear is still to this day is flying on a plane. I still get on and do it because I've built the tools now being 32. Yeah. But, um, yeah, everything just got harder traveling for hockey. Mm -hmm. Got really difficult and it would affect my gameplay because I was having panic attacks on the ice, you know, yeah. during inter intermissions and stuff. So, yeah, that just became part of my life. And then do you, when did you gravitate towards music? Do you think that is because you could stay in your house, yeah. you could go in your room, play guitar and do everything yourself by yourself? For sure. So I think there was this creative side of me that, when I would draw or just focus on this, you know, creative thing that I had a passion for, the anxiety would kind of go away because my mind was elsewhere and I was being creative. So uh, in fifth grade, my friend brought in a guitar for show and tell. And I saw, mm -hmm. I was like, that's so cool. And I gravitated towards it. And from then on, I would just sit in my room and play. But then again, having panic disorder, it's tough for you to get up in front of people Oh yeah. And I would have bands and stuff and that helped you cause you had other people you're jamming with and, and playing. And, um, I would still do like the talent show every year and unbeknownst to my Which peers. Which is crazy to me. I would have I panic attacks. Cause yeah. I know you as like not wanting to like refusing to perform on stage and not wanting to do that. So I think it must not, I mean, obviously you had your panic, but I think it's probably gotten worse over time. Yeah. As I got older and now new life things like your bubble kind of starts popping in a way and yeah. now you're going on to call you know you're doing different life things yeah um and that brings on a lot more stress stress, stress yeah yeah, panic. yeah um okay so you're now in high school um you never went to like dances and football games and anything like that right so during my high school like i think like 10th grade Mm -hmm. maybe ninth grade maybe um i dated a girl yeah um and you know when you're in high school and stuff like you're like i'm gonna marry this person oh totally yeah. um, totally. and she was a great older um oh you like the older ladies. i like the older ladies <laughs> but um yeah so i would go to like the dances with her class but she never liked okay. to come to the ones well yeah class, i get that you know, being the older she, girl she didn't yeah. want to go to like well in the younger the last episode we talked about like your school was ninth ten, so then when you were in 10th grade you didn't go to school with her when, if she was in i 11th. didn't no yeah. Oh, that was tough. Yeah. Was that tough on the relationship? I don't know. She's probably talking to all the boys. Oh, stop. <laughs> but um, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I would, I didn't go to my senior prom because uh, okay. obviously she was in college and we we're still oh. kind of dating and uh, she didn't want to come back. So, and I was going to ask my good friend in my art class mm -hmm. and the day I was going to ask her, like just as friends to yeah, go, yeah. she got asked by someone else. So I was like, uh, oh, I'm not going to go. Um, so high school, you just kind of did hockey, you did your art yeah. and you did your music. Yeah. And I was dating her, which was surprising because I like, I would get panicky doing certain things, like even going on dates and yeah. I don't even know, like if she, I think she, I would have, I had a panic attack at the mall with her one time Got and it. I think she was just like, you are weird. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I, who knows? Probably, well, not, yeah, but she probably, but I was like comfortable with her and her mm -hmm. family. So I would get like kind of panicky, but it wasn't to the extent of like, I'm going to, you know, have a yeah. full on because I was comfortable. Um, and, and two, I think that's why you really attach to that person because now I'm like, oh my gosh, like here's a person that I can, I have this anxiety and I'm already with, like it, it was very comfortable. Yeah. But she was also like your first yeah. love relationship. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Alrighty. So you're in high school dating this girl. Um, you're doing well with hockey, art, music. 
So now you're in college. Do you follow the girl to college? How did you like your college story? Yeah, thanks for asking. <laughs> um, so college, um, you know, I I really so I really wanted to pursue hockey. Yes. Okay, but I was battling this extreme anxiety and panic in hockey, and for me to excel my career in hockey, I had to go play junior A, okay. which um, I was good enough to do it and. You know, I had plenty of options to try out. I had very, I had a very difficult time traveling. Yes. And in order to do that, you had to travel far away and live far away. Yes. And then travel all over on a bus. You couldn't do it. So my senior year, I played for a, a junior travel team, not junior A, but junior B. And it was very hard. Like my dad pretty much went to every, a lot of the parents went, but he would ride the bus. Yeah. And go to everything. And like, you know, he He's helps out with dad. the team stuff. He's awesome. He's great dad. Um, but that being said, I was like, oh man, well, this sucks. Cause I, my dream from when I was little was to play in the NHL. Like yeah. that was my dream. I wanted to play for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Mm -hmm. Still my dream. So <laughs> <laughs> if they're yeah. watching, yeah, they're, well, I'm, I'm training. <laughs> um, no, but that was always my dream. And I kind of had to come to a realization. Okay. A lot of my friends from high school went to Slippery Rock University and they had a really good hockey team mm -hmm. and close to home, close to home. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something creative, whether it was like graphic design or yeah. some sort of computer art or something. And they had a good uh, art program. And so I enrolled, uh, I got in and um, started playing hockey there. And I pretty much went there. I was like, I'm just going there to play hockey. Like I don't care about school mm -hmm. um, until I got there and I got into the art program and I fell in love with, you know, all the teachers and all my professors and like everyone was so awesome. Yeah. And then you just like meet great people. And I really enjoyed the projects that we'd work on and the things I was learning um, in the art program. I did a lot of like printmaking, welding, mm -hmm. um, pottery, um, so I was just I like, I love in, your pottery. We still have thank some you. Yeah, and your we'll prints. To, yeah. I've got some prints and pottery. Now and, did the girlfriend go to the same college? Yep. So she was a year ahead. Got it. Um, and that whole time in high school, I would actually go up and like visit her. Yeah. It so you just, knew the campus. It, yeah. I knew the campus. I was like kind of familiar with stuff. It was only like 40 minutes away from where I lived. And, um, uh, but I was always felt like intimidated because she would always have these like guy friends around and, you yeah. know, with her group and stuff. And, um, you were jealous. I was jealous, uh, you know, because she was probably getting attention from other guys. You know, hindsight 2020, <laughs> she was probably... Relationship didn't work out. Yeah. Let's just She was probably that. hanging more with these guys and um, then I thought... heartbroken. Yeah. We I don't have to go into the, the details, um, but you don't have to. Yeah, just shattered. Yeah. And that was your freshman year or sophomore year? So I didn't really find out. I kind of heard like whispers, mm -hmm. but I didn't really find out until my junior year. Oh, junior year. College. Really? That yeah. long? Yeah. So you guys dated your freshman, your sophomore. You yeah, played we hockey. we kind of like were breaking, back backing up and we were kind of breaking up that ju my junior year. Got it. Um, her senior year because she like was half the time at school and then she was like doing some sort of thing at, uh, I think it was at Pitt or something. Yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. know. But um, so she wasn't even like really there anymore. Got it. Um, and it just started to get yeah, and then uh, your little I've, heart, your little heart was broken. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, it wasn't a great time for me because at the time I was, uh, I, you know, I was still having extreme anxiety. I had trouble getting to class sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a public speaking class that I just had to drop because I couldn't even do it. I couldn't even leave my dorm room to like go. That's crazy. And you, but you performed live for people in yeah. high school and but so obviously things got worse things got anxiety worse wise. yeah during college because i was like on my own and yeah um trying to navigate that and like living on my own and um yeah it was just it was really bad and uh yeah so i found out you know through th sorry so let's go back to like sophomore year yeah i started you know realizing okay hockey's kind of like it's fun i'm really pretty good at it but mm -hmm. i started posting covers on youtube yeah um my end of my sophomore like junior year Mm -hmm. um, actually it was I think it was my junior year um and I would have my hockey teammates film me yeah and then I would post them on YouTube and like I would set all the cameras up and like everything and like you did I started it all. I did it all and I started building like a little bit of a online following on YouTube and then um it was very much Nick Jonas vibes yeah yeah well <laughs> like one direction boy, um what was our hit song um oh god baby you I don't want to get it yeah, taken yeah, down because yeah, yeah. I can sing it perfectly I know what you're but um yeah what was that song called? Light up my world like my, my God, videos. do not uh, come for me. When I was, da, 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 can I be honest? I was not a One Directioner, know, uh, but I am a Harry Styles. You don't know fan. you're beautiful. 
Yeah, that one. Whatever. That had just come out and like they really took over the map. Uh, Justin Bieber's like boyfriend song. Just so that's where you know the time frame. Um, And I did a cover of Justin Bieber's boyfriend like overnight. This is early YouTube. It blew up. It had like 200,000 views. I was like, oh my gosh. And um, you went viral on Facebook. You're putting them on Facebook. And there was an app called Viddy. This is before Vine. Abby Mm -hmm. doesn't really remember because this was like the very first type of like Vine TikTok app. Mm -hmm. I was all over it. I was pretty well known on it. Um, had a pretty good following and I would just post covers daily of me singing, playing. This is like my senior year. With your long hair. I had like, yeah, it's some weird hairstyles. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, so like my senior year, I really started like really just pursue music. And I was, was like, that after the breakup? You yeah, think that so, really, you so were just like broken up. It, screw it all. It was gone. There was always like that part of me that was like, oh, maybe one day we'll like rekindle, rekindle or something. But yeah, it was gone at that point. Um, you just wrote it, all your sad songs about her. Yeah, I, w- I was I was still heartbroken. Uh, still am. Uh, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, but I was I got like this confidence in me because I had some really great friends on my hockey team. You know, we all lived together. We lived in like the hockey house. Yeah. And, um, I started to get like a confidence back that I'd lost. Like I just mm-hmm. felt depleted for a long time. Um, and with music and stuff, and so at parties and stuff and it probably wasn't great i drank a lot a uh, ton of alcohol and wait wait you didn't start drinking till you're 21 yeah though, i actually didn't start drinking crazy. because i had anxiety about drinking i thought it would give me panic attacks yeah so freshman year we would <laughs> everyone like at the hockey house you had to drink out of this old hockey skate oh, that had like blah. mold and crap in it Gross. and they made me drink milk out of it because <laughs> you were such a baby you I was such drink. a baby but, but no, that's an amazing thing I love yeah. that and I hope Poppy does it I hope yeah. you know from my story we know I did not do that and I think you did it the right way but I think the little heartbreak and the emotions you were just like but then it. when I started drinking um, I was like dang like you missed, missed out, out on so much <laughs> no because no. Because I thought now knowing, like I thought that helped my anxiety, which in turn, it just makes it. Just numbed it. It numbed it. And I I was a different person. I was just like more outgoing. I could talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. But then you would just have these spirals of days you were just so hungover. And then I couldn't even leave my dorm room because I was so, or like the hockey house because I was so uh, anxiety prone and, you know, felt awful. Yeah. Um, But yeah. So that being said, my senior year, I was single. I was drinking more and I was a catch. (laughs) Um, I didn't really know it because my confidence had been kind of crushed, but yeah. I was a catch and, um, you know, a lot of pretty girls at school and I would have a fling here and there, but I would always, <laughs> there was nothing like serious. Like it was always yeah. just like one girl I got kind of attached to because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to marry this girl. Yeah. And, um, that was like, it ended real quick and it was just, I should probably got like creeped out by it. <laughs> I was so serious. I was like, let's get married. You get attached. Um, but I, I think too, I was always searching and I know this is kind of cliche and romantic, but yeah. I was like, I wanted to have a girlfriend. Like I wasn't the type of guy who was like, oh, let's put another notch in the belt. You know, yeah. like so a lot of my friends were like that. And I, I wanted to find someone like I bonded with and could hang with. And that's just how I was wired that's I what i was into just had this conversation yesterday with a good friend on the phone and i was like she was telling me how she has this um person she's seeing and he's smothering her and she that was probably loves <laughs> no she loves her independence and she's like i i need a break from him and i said can i tell you i'm the complete opposite i'm the smotherer and i think that's why we connected so well in the beginning because we both wanted love we were and both a, obsessed with each other we were both we just wanted a a partner yeah. and we connected instantly and that's why I was like that's why I moved in with Josh a yeah. month into dating and he was so for it because we both just wanted I was that ready. we were both <laughs> I was ready and that like leads me to <laughs> yeah. post college right yeah. kind of lost don't know what I want to do um so hockey's over hockey's done played my last game careers over yeah uh, I was playing in like adult league beer league they call yeah. it and um just for fun just to like stay in shape um, you graduated with an. I graduated with a bachelor in art degree. So what are you doing with that? Not much. Um, <laughs> Even though you're very talented. Yeah, uh, but I was I was actually traveling home because I was still working for my family business in the summers. Um, so I was actually my super senior year. I went for four and a half years. Got I had it. to have that little extra half Love that. party. You know, Love uh, that. what do they call that? A uh, victory lap. Yeah. Um, and I had three classes. <laughs> <laughs> you just weren't giving That's, it up. You're like, I yeah. don't want to work. Yeah. I don't want to have I a real job yeah. and real commitments. So but my dad, he's all, he made me drive home like yeah. two or three days a week to work from like, I think I had a class that ended at like 1130 or something. I would have to come home from like noon to like five. Yeah. And they were building a uh, office building at the time. And I was like sweeping the floors and cleaning up and it sucked. But yeah, yeah he made me do that to like, he's like, you got to do something. 
Um, so yeah, after college, I actually got a job for my family business working now in their office. Yeah. Um, so I was doing a lot more like the bookkeeping, um, job keeping, uh, answering phones, uh, dealing with uh, tenants. And, and I would say this is when you went full force into music. This was it. I was like, all right, here's my shot music. Yeah. Um, and I actually skipped ahead. <laughs> After college, I actually moved to New York City oh, for yeah. like a month or two at a time. I lived. Josh, on- he kills me. He goes, I lived in New York. I was like, yeah. you were there for like a month. <laughs> I uh, I lived on a couch with a really good friend uh, in Lower East Side, Manhattan, um, just pursuing music even more. They were producers um, and they saw the drive I had because I was like, I'm making it, boys. Like, yeah. You know, but your anxiety. Is- but my anxiety was crippled. Like I could barely leave their uh, apartment. Yeah. Because like I go into the city and it was just like all the cars and the honking, like you just, mm-hmm. uh, I like it would have to much. run back inside. It was too much. Um, so tried that for a little bit and then came back home, started working for the family business uh, in the office. In your bubble, your comfortable in my, bubble. In my comfortable bubble, I'm a home bird. And, but I was like, I'm going to make it in music. I'm going to create my own music, release it. And uh, I went full in, like no girlfriend, no nothing. Like had a very small group of friends that I'd hang with. And it was music like yeah. that. I was married to my music yeah. uh, for a good two, three years. And then I came in. Until you came <laughs> in. Like, yeah. Like most of my friends, like I had one party, my friend cornered me. It was like a New Year's Eve party. Yeah. And they were trying to get me to like ho- hang out with this girl, hook up with this girl. Yeah. And I was just so invested with my, with my music and I had so much anxiety. Like I didn't date or anything. Like I couldn't even go on dates. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have like online relationships like because it was safe. Yeah. And he like, he's like, dude, what is going on? Like, like are do you, you not like girls? Are like, you into girls? Yeah. And I was like, no, like a lot of my friends didn't think I was into girls because I just, I didn't date anyone. I just, yeah. I was so invested in my music and I had this awful crippling anxiety and going on a date to me, I would just sweat thinking about it. Yeah. Um, and then I was just like, no, like I, I just, you know, you're I, comfortable. Yeah. I'm comfortable. I, I, I want to pursue music. Your anxiety was at zero because you weren't pushing yourself. You weren't going out of that. As soon as I would think about like trying to date a girl or, or being one-on-one with a girl, like I would, I I would get, I'm very confident in like how I talk and stuff, but I would get like very like, uh, uh, like almost like a a rat in a cage, like just really squirmy um, and get really panicky, sweaty. So I just like avoided, you know, a lot of times in panic, you can either fight it or flight it. And I would flight everything. Like I would just piece it. Like, I don't know. I can't deal with that. Like, you know, float away. So I like to toot my own horn. I'm trying to think of the another term the, that I got you on that fight thing. I think yeah. I, well, obviously further into our relationship yeah. once I knew, because um, if you want to get into it, when we first started dating, um, he would just tell me every week, I have to go to a doctor's appointment. I'm like, okay, whatever. I have to go to a doctor's appointment. I'm like oh, once a, once a week. Okay, whatever. And then finally, you told me, you're like, I go to, it's my therapist. Yeah, I, go I go to therapy. To therapist. And you were so nervous and embarrassed yeah. to tell me because I had no idea. I knew you were quirky. Like yeah. when we first started dating, I was like, could tell you were nervous yeah. and you do your, like you said, your jittery yeah. things. But I was like, oh, he's just cute and quirky. But like when you, I finally, when you told me I, and I had no idea. And I think we should do a full episode. Yeah, we'll dive into On your pan and, yeah. and how someone like myself who has no panic and no anxiety it was hard on our relationship in the beginning because i was just like dude grow up like get over this i i couldn't understand what you were actually going through there was one time i was like i was like i need we need to go to miami and you were like no i cannot get on a plane and i was like i'll break up with you and i was like looking back that's so mean and so terrible because i didn't understand yeah um but yeah that'll be a whole episode but um in the beginning you were very sheltered with it and didn't tell me and then um you finally were just like yeah i I go to therapy yeah it it honestly like i mean through it was probably like after high school into my college years like i touched on it but like i had agoraphobia so like mm-hmm. you know i couldn't go to penguin games too many people i couldn't yeah. go to sporting events uh, i couldn't go to malls um and i had a hard time going to grocery stores mm-hmm. like i would go in and it just feel like a rave like i would just have so much anxiety and still to this day and it's tough for me to say this because you're i'm being vulnerable but i still and abby knows i still have trouble going to grocery stores oh, 1, um I, I have trouble going to get my hair cut yeah. Um, I, I have, have to go going, everywhere with him. We I have go everywhere trouble together. going uh, to doctor's appointments mm-hmm. like alone. Yeah. I've just had it forever. And, you know, oftentimes uh, it's it's uh, people feel embarrassed to like talk about it and mm-hmm. say it, but it's completely normal. And now I'm at a point in my life where 
if I can talk about it and helps one person who's maybe dealing with that, like honestly going to get my haircut was like, I needed a haircut. I want to look good, but like I couldn't drive there, sit there. I would get clammy, panicky, Mm -hmm. but in doing that, like now I have like a great bar. Like I love going like, yeah, you went by yourself yeah, the last you, time, you find, which was rare. Yeah. You find like a good person to cut your hair, like a good place. And then you get comfortable and stuff. And that, that takes a while to build up to, but similar with like the grocery store, you know, you find a grocery store and like, you have to take baby steps. And you wouldn't go to just last this weekend yeah. on Saturday. He wouldn't go in. I was like, Josh, I really want dessert. And he was like, let's go into Whole Foods. I yeah. said, but I'm tired. Like, can you just run in, 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 Poppy was sleeping. I was going to sit in the car with her. And he was like, I was like, can you just run in and get me ice cream? You know exactly where it is. I can tell you the aisle. Go back. He refused. We circled Whole Foods parking lot twice. He then left because I was like, fine, whatever. If you don't want to go in, I don't want to go in. Go to Dunkin' Donuts. So we go to Dunkin' Donuts drive through. They didn't have my donut. I was like, I really want dessert. So he went back to Whole Foods and I was like, Josh, I am not going inside with you. And he's like, I'm not going in. I can't (laughs) go in there by myself. So... I said, okay, yeah. let's have our family trip. We took Poppy. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. It was great. Poppy was wild in there. But like, it's still a daily yeah. thing with you. It's not like you're 100%. You're working on it. Like you said, we just flew to Nashville. Yeah. That was your My actually call. call. And I was like, that's amazing. It's baby steps. Um, but the whole reason yeah. I got into therapy before I met, it was probably a year before I met Abby. Yeah. Um, or no, a year before we dated. Sorry. Yes. Uh, that I started therapy. And the reason I did it was these opportunities were coming up in music and I was going to have to travel at some point yeah. and fly. And I called and it was very hard for me because my family business, they had office buildings. And one of the tenants was a mental health, like, you know, uh, uh, psycho- psychologist? Yeah. Psych- yeah. Office. Um, and I, they would call me with like, hey, we have a leak in the toilet and stuff. And I was the one who took care. And I called them the one day and I was like, hi. And they're like, oh, hey, Josh, like, what's up? Like, is there yeah. a And I was like, I actually would like to see someone. Yeah. And just me making that call was one of the hardest things. And I felt so embarrassed at the time when looking back, like there was nothing to be embarrassed about. And I got in with an amazing doctor um, pretty much because I, I didn't really go into like, oh, I have this panic disorder. Here's all my issues. I was like, I can't fly. And that was yeah. like my, th- like a lot of people can't fly. So uh, yeah, I'll just say like, oh, I can't fly. Then when I got in with my doctor, I was like, I have panic disorder. I've had hundreds of panic attacks. And he yeah. was like, whoa, like. It's a little bit in. deeper than yeah, just flying. Yeah, deeper than just flying. Um, but that being said, I was off medication. I got off my medication. I only took it for like a year. I just, mm-hmm. I was drinking on it. Like it just was you not didn't good. Like the way it made didn't you Didn't like the way it made me feel. Um, but that being said, I, I, I think too, and I can't really speak on it because everyone's different. But when I started eating better as well, mm-hmm. my anxiety and panic got better. Um, but that was the whole reason I went into therapy was to fly and lo and behold, I was able to get on a plane um, because I had to go to uh, Texas um, for a music opportunity. And then from there on, oftentimes people with anxiety and stuff, it helps to have someone in your corner who's pushing back against it. Yeah, and I I was, now looking back was very harsh, but- um, You need someone to challenge you. Yes. um, Or else the only way you can grow is by doing difficult things. Mm -hmm. And with panic, you have to, you know, every time you do something difficult, it's like a little achievement and you feel great. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to continue doing it because, you know, even during COVID, no one went out, no one did anything. And my anxiety oh, got worse and worse. Oh, he was like, I think you really, I think Josh really, really thought I'll never have to leave my house or Pittsburgh ever again. Yeah. Um, and it's just not the case anymore. I'm glad the world's opening back up, but it was very hard because with our career now, um, you know, we are very fortunate we're able to do this still in Pittsburgh and we're not in New York. We're not in LA. We're not those type of people anyway. We don't need to go to the latest events and, and premieres and all of that stuff. But some opportunities have come up where I needed to be in New York for one thing, or we needed to meet our team. We were, we've been doing social media content creation for two years and we never even met our manager in person. Um, and it was finally time and it was a, a push, but you did it and we got there. Um, same as I know we touched base on the first episode on like when you went on tour with the Dixie chicks and, um, you, you made it through and you did it, but it was definitely a challenge. Yeah. Which I, (laughs) I, obviously I think that's a long story and we're going to bring that up in another episode. Yeah. But, um, just thinking of like anxiety and stuff. I had a friend who just recently called me who I actually lived on his couch. I was talking about earlier 
And uh, he's like, hey, man, like, how's the anxiety and everything now? Because, you know, it's part of my life he knew. And he asked me, he's like, is your anxiety more or less now being a dad? Yeah. And I, it stopped me real quick. And I had to think about it. And I said, actually, my panic and anxiety is less now than it's ever been. Obviously, I have a lot more tools now that I've built. But leading up to having Poppy, mm-hmm. I was a bundle of stress, like in the hospital, like, oh, my goodness, panic, <laughs> like anxiety. It was just your life's changing. But yeah. that being said, Being a father now, you're kind of looking through a different lens. And a lot of the times, panic and anxiety can be from a self-centered thing. How do I feel? Why am I feeling this way? It's all about me. It's an internal thing. And it's tough to realize that and accept that. And now my my thought process and my worry is like, Poppy. Poppy. yeah. Oh, my, my daughter. You know, it's not about me anymore. So when I'm on an airplane and Poppy's with me, I'm not like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm having a panic attack. I mean, that's in the back of my head. (laughs) But- it's about her. Is she okay? Yeah. Is she safe? And just looking at her, I, I just, there's like a calmness. Um, yeah. And so I would say my actually being, becoming a father has done wonders for my anxiety and panic in a weird way. No, it's like exactly like you said. And that was a big struggle. I was like, you were only worried about yourself. You only think about yourself. And once again, me not understanding the anxiety, like that's what it does. Yeah. And I was like, think about me, do stuff for me. I'm always compromising for your needs. And you weren't, you were trying your best yeah. and um, we'll, we'll, we'll do a full episode on it. But I totally agree. And I, I thought, honestly, I was worried. I thought it was going to be worse with Poppy. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like, oh my gosh, you can't touch us. Oh my gosh, she's doing that. Oh my God. And like, you're, I love the way you're parenting because I was so worried. I was like, I hope he doesn't hover see and i'm the smother. opposite because i want her you don't want her i to don't have. want her to be smothered or like be yeah. hovered um i want her to explore do dangerous things carefully yes that's well, how we overseeing learn. and watching yeah. we do we let her do her own thing yeah. um we're always watching and she's as of right now thriving so i think it's the best thing for her for you yeah. for us and yes yeah, so i i i feel like did we Get off two track or get off. I track mean, of, we kind of bounced around a lot, and I know yeah. we're going to dive into you know the anxiety part. Maybe we uh, should do that next episode because it's, it's 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 a the tour part because that was a whole um, yeah. story. And uh, I feel I know a lot of people reached out to me. We did a little bit on YouTube a couple, gosh, almost a year ago. We did a little episode about it, and a lot of people were like, you know, my partner has this, or my daughter, my son, and like, how are you dealing with it yeah. as someone that doesn't have it? And yeah. Um, I think hearing your side of the person who's going through it mm-hmm. and then this person watching and trying to understand um, is a, a huge thing. Yeah. And if you're watching or listening, like I even get a lot of DMs. I try to answer everybody um, because when it comes to panic disorder and anxiety, like it's hard, you feel like you're the only one that has that has got this feeling. And mm-hmm. I promise you, you're not. I mean, yeah. it's a terrible feeling. You, depersonalization happens you don't even feel like you're part of this universe it's like a weird feeling um very scary and uh it feels like you're drowning underwater sometimes but whenever i was like somebody's got to help me i was like desperate and i remember looking online with my parents when i was younger and it was like a scam thing but this it was like to cure your panic disorder or something and they like signed me up and everything it was this stupid booklet (laughs) that did nothing but tried if you know somebody, uh, a spouse, a friend, a husband, a, a daughter, um, what have you, that is struggling with panic, maybe show them or have them listen to this uh, podcast. Because um, I hope to be, I had a choice to either be not, you know, silent about how I feel because some, you know, especially males in this dominant figure, we try to, you know, oh prevail. Gosh, the whole uh, Andrew Tate, I don't even want to give him uh, a name. But yes, the, that whole like, thing that's going around it's, right now. It can be sometimes embarrassing showing you're vulnerable there's a lot of men that struggle with anxiety and panic and i just hope to be a beacon um of openness Mm -hmm. because i don't i i tend to go back to how i felt and i was so desperate and so scared because i didn't think anybody felt the way i felt i felt so alone yeah um so even just showing someone this and knowing hey here's me i go through this people see us now and we're doing all this crazy and stuff. They think and they like, oh, he's so confident and he's so, he must not struggle with this single thing. And yeah. same as, as me, when we just even talked about in the first episode about our financial situation, people are like, you guys struggle, yeah. you're TikTokers. I'm like, what does that have to do with any? We're real people. Yep. Um, we just make content online and um, we hope that people enjoy it. And we try to put the smiles on the face, but we have our own struggles and we deal with things daily and we're, we're not 
anything different than a normal person who we just share our lives online. Yeah. And even too, like where we're at now, like Abby and I have our own business. We're so grateful, but like throughout my life, like I could barely hold other jobs. Like I had (laughs) all these other jobs and you know, you can't really say like, Hey, I can't show up today. I'm having a lot of anxiety. And it's like, I would get, I would have panic attacks on these jobs. And I was like, maybe one day if I have my own business, I won't have it. Well, I can be honest with you and tell you like every day I wake up, I have some sort of anxiety that, or some sort of battle I have to go through. It's not as severe as it was because I've created a lot of tools for myself and yeah. gained a lot of knowledge about what's going on. Eating very healthy helps. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't have it as severe, but um, yeah. So that being said, we're going to wrap up. Well, wait, wait, um, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I forgot to ask okay. one question because oh, I know I, I, this is great. I learned so much and I think it was a, a good life story of Josh and, and where we are now, but I totally forgot to ask where did the tattoos and when did the tattoos come into play? <laughs> so thank you guys so life. much for listening and watching today. <laughs> no, because um, I feel like so many people, we've yeah, been on TikTok uh, for what, two years now? Yeah. And people are still like, Josh has a full sleeve. Yeah. And knowing your story and knowing how you hate hospitals, the fact that like, we didn't even touch the base on giving blood needles. Like yeah. you pass out, you panic, yeah. you go white. How the heck did you get a full sleeve of tattoos? So, all right, this was 23 years old. Uh, I just got back from New York, you know, working for the family business and stuff in the office and pursuing music, right? Now, I always liked art. I thought tattoos were so cool. Like, I thought David Beckham, like his tattoos, I was like, that's so sick. Like, that's awesome. Um, And I just thought it was cool. I was, I had a motorcycle at the time. Like, I thought it was cool. Oh my God, the motorcycle. And I was just like, uh, like there's a part of me that's like I'm gonna be a, like a rebel you know my mom was very strict and stuff and I just oh thank you yeah I know I, I caught it and I was like I'm gonna stop I'm it <laughs> I don't even notice it but um my foot was tapping for those listening again yeah. um so yeah my mom was very strict like no tattoos no piercings yeah um and there was just I was just like I'm gonna get this tattoo and the first one I got was this angel like naked angel <laughs> <laughs> um with the clouds and my mom was she was not happy when I no. came home with that. But my cousin actually went with me. He's like, dude, I'm going to get a tattoo. To which, <laughs> which cousin? Uh, my one cousin, uh, Patrick. Oh, and okay, okay, okay. He got a tattoo on his side and we went together. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was so cool. And then I was like playing guitar. I had these tattoos. Like, yeah, I was listening yeah, to One like Direction that. and all those boys had <laughs> tattoos. Um, so I was like, I'm going to be like them. Um, Wait, they did? Yeah, they all had tattoos. They're all tatted up. And like Zane and Harry. Oh, I got it, got it. Um, and I always liked this old school. I always had a passion for like James Dean. Like You get so many compliments on your tattoos. Like the, well, so many people Yeah, shout out them. to my artist, John Fetch. Uh, yeah. He's got an awesome, I think it's called Black Sail Tattoo. Slipper Rock. Uh, yeah, he's in Grove City now. He did my uh, moon. He did your moon. <laughs> my little moon. Um, we did, we went together. So if you're looking for a tattoo shop, he's awesome. And uh, yeah, he did all my tattoos. Because when you, when you find... Uh, a good tattoo artist, you know, mm-hmm. you tend to stay. But jumping ahead though, my very first tattoo, mm-hmm. which we can get into another, uh, one of my best friends, hockey teammate, he passed away yeah. and that was his hockey number. So that, that was your very first That one. was my very first one. He was number 77. Love that. Um, he passed away just after college, okay. uh, tragic accident. Um, so after, that was my first one, but it was so subtle, like you couldn't really see it. Yeah. And then once I had that, I was like, I'm going to get this angel, Yeah. you know, on my side. And then I just started going rogue from there. And I, I was finding a lot of inspiration online. We should go and get more. Wait, I, I can't I get one some. now that I'm pregnant, can I? I haven't had one like... So, uh, that last one, you're, yeah. you're cross. Yeah, I got a cross. When we first started and, dating. Um, yeah, so... Wait, the one kills me. He has like two faces on the inside of his arm. And when he moves, when it it ha- moves his yeah. arms, the faces the get faces distorted. Get a little distorted. Um, and it's really funny. I, I did think about maybe getting like a heart with Poppy. You got to... I don't. I, just, I wouldn't go to the other arm. I would just keep it but all on the arm. I feel unbalanced. Like I was I'm very say, symmetrical. For the way Josh is, everything has to be. Com- we didn't even touch base on that. Oh my god, That's, yeah. that should be in the whole my, like, anxiety, OCD, anxiety. OCD ex- like the way he is with numbers and s- symmetry and clean, whatever. Um, which I'm shocked. That's what you did. But no, I think at this point you have to keep it on that arm. We yeah. should. Can you get, you can't get a tattoo when you're pregnant. Probably not. That's pretty I stupid. I think so. Maybe we do a YouTube video of me going to get a tattoo. You should. My mom wants to years. get another one. Um, But yeah, it was just like a phase kind of thing I went through. I don't, I honestly don't even realize I have them anymore. Like honestly, and people I'm are like, oh, like, your tattoos. I'm just like so yeah. excited to see what you're going to look like at like 70 years old with those. I think I look pretty, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I'm 32 years old, but I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn. I know we said that in this episode, but yeah. I don't look a day past 25. Okay. I can even grow a beard. No, he cannot. Like, I still have my hair. 
my mustache is longer. I have no chest hair. None. Not even. Not Um, as like. Once again, my nipple hair is longer than yours. (laughs) Should we just end the podcast there? Um. So. Once again, to our listeners, we <laughs> want to thank you guys for sticking around. This is a long episode, uh, um, kind of long-winded here. Um, Abby's going to go pluck some hairs after no, this stop, episode. No, stop, stop, then... stop, stop. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up. So we yeah. learned that you, ha- you had a pooping problem at a young age. Pooping panic. Yeah. Wait, should that be the title of the podcast? Yeah. Josh's story, pooping panic disorder and, mu- and tattoos. And tattoos. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, so. it's a great. I I thank you for sharing your story, you. and I'm really really excited because um there's so much to share about um your panic anxiety, and I really that's going to be the next episode. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, um, it really means a lot, Abby. I appreciate you know all your support thus far, and I did want to do uh, before we let our viewers and listeners go. Um, we were gonna play a little short game. Um, I made up, and it's yeah. uh, ten questions with Josh. So, Abby, when you're ready, um, just rapid fire, just 10 questions. It can be anything Wait, from... Wait, ask you 10 questions? Yeah, you can ask me 10 questions. Um, and more so, just like a short answer. You like, just put that right on the spot. Right on questions. the spot. Like, okay. what's your favorite? Yep, Black, got it. You know? Got it. Go okay, ahead. here we go. Um, what's your favorite color? White. Oh. What's your favorite animal? Dog. What's your favorite... Or tiger. I like oh. tigers. Too. What's your favorite TV series? Mad Men. I knew that. Oh, I should answer too. Um, what's your favorite? Um, what's your favorite movie? Probably. Oh man, that's a tough one. I I liked all the Disney originals. You're, um, you're a Disney like gal. Like Aladdin, Lion King. Um, I'm a Disney gal. But um, favorite movie? Go first one in your head. Probably anything from like the Lord, Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Yeah, okay. Harry Potter. Um, your favorite food? Avocado. Oh, um, how many questions have I asked so far? I think that's five. Can we get a? Is that five? <laughs> that's five. Five. Okay, five more. Um, oh goodness. I'll keep tabs. What is your? Uh, uh, Come on, favorite number. What's know. your favorite number? So I, I battle with that. I was number twenty-one mm-hmm. for hockey growing up, but I really like the number one. Got it. Um, and ten. So one ten and twenty one. Oh okay. Who's your favorite, me or Poppy? Poppy. Great. Um, oh 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 oh. So that's three more, I think. Yes. Uh, what's your favorite hair color of mine? Because I just dyed my hair. You better. The one it currently is. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, what <laughs> is? What's your favorite? Wait, what? I'm gonna, I'm talking about myself now. I'm gonna yeah. hit myself up. What's your favorite feature of mine? Is that the right question? Well, I don't know how this turned into Abby's uh, <laughs> yeah, question. Um, I like your uh, eyebrows. I thought you were gonna say lips. You always talk about my lips. You li- yeah, I like your lips and your eyebrows. Thank you. Very cute. Thank you. Um. Okay. 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 What's your favorite thing about Poppy? Oh, and oh. sorry, one more. You have a little freckle. If we can get a zoom up on Abby's camera. Oh She's got God. a little cute freckle. Right. On and her it, nose. can I tell you, it was from tanning. Remember yeah. when I said I went tanning like three times but a day? But I just think it's adorable. It's I think it's the right cutest there. little thing ever. Thank you. Um, I love that little nose freckle. Okay, so last question. What's your favorite thing about Poppy? Um, well, there's been different stages, but yeah. right now, my favorite thing is Da 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 <laughs> Literally that's all she says 24-7. Yeah. And she knows that Dada gives her her bubbas. Yeah. So anytime she's drinking her bottle. Which is her milk. Her, yeah. She's like, Dada, Dada. She and associates when, me now with When her. it's empty, she goes, Dada, Dada. Yeah. And it's, uh, so, it's so funny. Like I'll be in the kitchen. She's on the couch with yeah. her bubba. Yeah. And she'll like finish it or something. And she turns around on the couch. She goes, Dada, Dada, Dada. <laughs> Dad, dad. So that's my so favorite thing. It's her getting and when she gives me her hugs, I go oh give daddy God. hug, and she runs up, sprints to me. So well, that was fun. And then yeah. really quickly, we are. Um, you guys were so amazing. I asked on my Instagram um, if you guys wanted to be featured in our shout out yes. segment uh, at the end of every episode. I'm gonna shout read- out segment. Oh, that was good. That should That's be our new thing. Um, to leave a little review, it really helps us, especially on the Apple podcast. It helps us get in the top charts, which is yeah. really cool. Um, which you guys got us up to number 30, right? Yeah, we got, got up to number 30. Still not good enough. 
Oh, but, uh, <laughs> stop it. That is, no, that, it's no, plenty. It's awesome. So I'm going to read and give a couple shout outs. So okay. here we go. Alrighty, so I am going to read our little shout outs. If you guys don't know already, you can enter our shout out portion on Apple reviews. You just go to review. Um, you can put shout out in the header of the review, or I said, if you put any type of emojis, put a ton of emojis, that way I can catch it. So here we go for the first shout outs. Shout outs, Woo! here we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout outs. That was great. <laughs> All right. My name is Mariah. My husband is from Pittsburgh, so we love everything Pittsburgh. Shout out Pittsburgh. The Steelers, the Penguins, and the Pirates are favorites. You're my top favorite person. Thank you so much. I love y'all's marriage, and I strive to be like you guys. Thank you for being real and being you. Can't wait for more. Mariah. Mariah. That was so sweet. Thank you. Shout out to Pittsburgh. I kind of yep. forget um, how many people from Pittsburgh yeah. follow us, which is really, really cool. We love it. Yeah. And if you guys ever see us out, we love taking photos and saying hi, because yeah. like, what is life? Like yeah. that we're taking photos with people. So very cool. And then I'm going to read the next one and then I'll pass it to Josh. Right. I am so excited about this podcast. Thank you, so are we. The Herbert's content is my comfort, comfort content. And I love just seeing how much they all love each other. Such a wonderful family. Hannah, I hope I don't mess up your last name. Perila? Perila, Perilla, yeah. Perilla engineer Ooh, little engineer that is Structural, amazing i love her emoji she used too so oh, thank cool. you so much for leaving the review we appreciate it so much and here you go josh all right let's see here oh oh uh -oh. no this always happens <laughs> every time i grab her phone it like josh jumps. hates how big i have the it's every a, pro max she's got the pro max <laughs> phone and it's like an ipad josh loves the little baby phones it's i not can't. a baby phone it fits how do you fit this in your pocket it's so like, nice it's like an ipad um, so the bottom two you can read. All right. All right. So this one is from Petunia. Um, five star rating. Amazing is the header. Hey, Josh and Abby. My name is Savannah. I am so excited to listen to more episodes of your new awesome podcast. So excited for new baby. Love mm -hmm. you all. Heart emoji, heart emoji, star, another kissy heart, <laughs> heart unicorn okay. and the hands. Um, oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Savannah. Petunia or Savannah. Um, thank you for listening. And our last shout out uh, from Olivia JT. Ooh. So happy about the podcast. I've been waiting for this moment and I'm so excited. I love watching and listening to you guys while walking with my 14 month year old daughter. Aww, Aww. Thank I you. can't wait to hear more about motherhood and see what guests you bring on. Olivia JT, lipstick emoji, heel emoji. <laughs> Heart on fire emoji. Thank you, Olivia. Oh, uh, thank you. That's it. so sweet. Your little 14 month. I need to start That's going so to walk with Poppy. I'm bad. Yeah, we need to start walking more. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we are so excited to talk more about motherhood. Like I said, next episode, we'll talk about the anxiety yep. panic. Then we'll do parenthood. And we are working on the guests. So if you guys yes. are watching this on YouTube, please go to the comment section and comment any guests you want to see on. Yep. Literally anyone. And we will try our best. We are going to fly them, them to Pittsburgh to be on set with and us. And Josh it's is going to have them sit on his lap. They're going to sit on my lap if they're okay with that. Um, yeah, well, that wraps up this episode. That wraps so. up the episode. Abby and I are actually going to head out. Uh, we're going to check on the progress of our new home, which ah! we'll talk about as well. Yeah. Um, they are framing currently. So uh, we're going to go check it out and yeah. uh, maybe grab some lunch. Yeah. I'm kind of hungry. So Let's with go. that being said, thank you guys for listening. Uh, this is Who Wears the Pants podcast. Be sure to give us a five-star rating if you want. on the Apple Store. <laughs> give it to us. And um, subscribe, subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel, The Herberts. And uh, we'll just keep Feel it, you know, feeling. We'll keep feeding this content <laughs> to you guys. We love it and well, we're so grateful. And uh, you have a wonderful, prosperous day. Signing off, Abby and Josh. Thank you. Bye bye. See you next week. Bye.